This past summer, while on vacation, my family uh, traveled up to Maine to gather with uh, my two brothers, and uh, we decided to spend a long weekend there. On Saturday, my two brothers, uh, my boys, and my nephew and I decided to go to the beach, Popham, Popham Beach. Uh, the wives decided to do, to do something else. It was a guy's uh, day at the beach. But well, we went and, uh, to this beach called Popham Beach, and it's a beautiful state park that has some, some beautiful sandy beaches, which is a little bit rare in the, on the main coast, but it also has a river that flows through some uh, marshlands, down uh, through various sand dunes, and out to the ocean. And it creates a very interesting landscape between those dunes and beaches. When we arrived, of course, we, we took our towels and, and bags and plopped them down and then immediately waded out through the, the tidal waters uh, of that river to kind of get to the, the sand dune that was out there and there was uh, uh, a sandbar. And so my boys went out swimming and uh, my nephew and my brother and I kind of wandered looking for, for seashells uh, as we were enjoying the day. There were other people who were out there gathered and, and walking around, swimming, having a good time. And, and as we were walking on this sandbar, I noticed that it was shrinking. The tide was gradually coming in. And so we kind of enjoyed that as we were walking along and seeing this little, little island that we were standing on uh, get smaller and smaller. We noticed that the waters were rising. We enjoyed it for a bit, and then we noticed that the, the tide was coming in to the mouth of the river there, and it was actually coming against the waters that were flowing out and pushing them back, and actually reversing the flow of the river. And as we stood there, we watched and saw that the tidal waters were coming in stronger and stronger and it soon became apparent that in order for, for people to get back to the mainland where they were, that they had to, to cross again this river that was getting deeper and deeper and they were getting cut off. Some began to, to cross and had to swim across. My nephew who had just recently Swum had some difficulty, and we, we eventually made it off that sandbar, or we would have been cut off. In a matter of a few hours, the rising waters of that tide and that river had changed and made a carefree walk on the beach a more treacherous journey. I don't know exactly why that happened. I'm wondering if that summer experience was some kind of precursor of what would happen later on this summer. And to see then the, how waters have risen here in Wilkes-Barre as well as in other parts of our conference. The recent rains certainly caught us all off guard. Who would have thought that they would have reached beyond the level of Agnes? But life is full of surprises, isn't it? And sometimes we get caught off guard with the, with the unexpected changes and challenges that come our way. I was briefly caught off guard as, as the rising waters came up on the coast of Maine, but, but I've heard all, so many other stories this week of the harrowing events that took place, of the rising waters, people caught by surprise running for their lives. Some men in Forkston who, who had gone to, to prepare a chicken barbecue in the picnic fields there and were barely able to get off the picnic field in safety as the waters rose from their ankles to their chest in minutes. A pastor's family in Wellsboro District who wo were woken up in the middle of the night and taken out of their home by a bucket loader and lost everything. And last Sunday I sat in worship with a family with two young children who were evacuated, whose home was literally swept away, and then saw their home smash against the bridge in Tunkhannock. 
If you have been watching the news or even driving around a bit, as the bishop has done today, we all have seen and witnessed the rising waters that can surprise us, that can threaten us, and threaten serious damage, physically as well as to property. And whether or not you yourself was actually affected by those floodwaters, we all, I'm sure, have faced circumstances we are, where we are caught off guard, where we feel as if we are being inundated by challenges, by pressures, by, by changing landscapes in our personal lives, in our corporate lives, even in the church. You know, we think we have life under control, and then we find ourselves overwhelmed with obstacles, with, with worry, with grief, with sin. And as these types of challenges come flooding in, we tend to lose our connectedness to one another. We may even lose our connectedness to God the source of stability in life, and despair can so easily set in. Perhaps some have felt that way, even in the United Methodist Church. You know, life has changed so fast. The familiar ways of doing church don't seem to be working as they once did. The means of, of doing church and worshiping have changed that we feel cut off. Our old shorelines of, of tradition that we're used to are no longer visible. We seem to be cut off from, from all that is familiar, from all that, that holds us together as a community of faith. We see we're cut off from one another. And it feels as if we are cut off from God. Friends, I wish to say to you today that we must remember that when we face the rising waters, whether it be the literal rising waters of the floods or, or rising waters of fear and grief and despair, that we are not alone. Here again, the words of the prophet, do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you are precious in my sight and honored. I love you. Friends, that is the good news that we hold as a people of faith. The promise is sure. God is with us. We are not alone. Though the waters are rising and seem to be overwhelming, God is with us and God will somehow see us through to a new day. There is hope. That is God's promise to us. I will be with you. We are a people of hope because God has claimed us and called us by name. We are never cut off from God unless we choose to. The promise and that message is for each and every person that is here in the sanctuary. Whenever the waters rise, but more importantly, and I wish we need to, to hear this again, that God wants us to share that same message, that message of hope with those outside these walls, for that is what we are called to do. There are so many who are affected by the rising waters who have not heard that message of hope. Just yesterday I was in Durier, checking out on the various places that have been affected. And I drove by and there was a woman there working on her house and they had spray painted a sign that said, don't just stare, help. Friends, that is despair, the waters of despair that are rising. And that is the feeling of people being cut off who feel there is no hope of healing. And we are the ones who need to give that message of hope. In our gospel lesson this morning, or this evening, the gospel story that was told was one about a man who was cut off. This man who was paralyzed, we don't know the reasons why he was paralyzed, whether it was from birth or, or whether he had some illness, but for whatever it was, he was unable to walk. He was not whole. And because of the, the Jewish laws and the Jewish customs, 
He, like others who had debilitating circumstances, they were isolated from their community. He was cut off, cut off by their laws and customs. He was cut off by, by the crowds who pushed in to see around Jesus, not preventing him from getting to that healing touch. He was cut off by those crowds who were, who were so focused on their own needs that they blocked the way for others to get closer. And I wonder if there are times in church when we have been so inwardly focused, so concerned about our own needs and that we are oblivious to the needs of those around us, those outside our doors. But in our gospel story, this man who was unfortunate to have been paralyzed, but, but fortunate enough to have a few people who looked at him, who stopped and paid attention enough and who cared enough and said, this man needs to get to a source of healing. And so these, these people tried to get him to Jesus. They sought a new way to offer hope as, as they couldn't get through the crowd, so they went up to the roof and, and they took off the reeds and the mud or whatever it was used for shade and they, they dismantled it and took it apart so that they could let the man down from the roof. They were creative enough and persistent enough to find a new way to bring healing and hope, to dismantle the barrier, to let that man in need down to Jesus. And then notice what the scripture says. It says, when Jesus saw their faith, when Jesus saw their faith, he then turned to the paralytic and said, son, your sins are forgiven. Jesus, in essence, is, is offering forgiveness. He's restoring and reconnecting this man to the community because of those efforts of those around him, those who stopped, those who cared. Friends, there are too many people who don't have a means to reach Jesus, the source of healing and hope. The tides of life and the negative messages of society sometimes work against and prevent others from connecting with Jesus, the source of health and wholeness. And tonight, all around us in communities, there are people who are dazed and exhausted by the recent floods. There are people outside these walls, these walls of the church, who are feeling the rising waters of despair because of other needs, because of hunger, because of isolation from addictions, from homelessness, from hopelessness. They're waiting for someone who cares enough to stop and find a means to raise their hopes. They're waiting for someone to bring them good news, physically as well as spiritually. They're waiting for someone to take off the roof to find new ways to bring them to the heart of Jesus. I believe, friends, that we are the ones who are called to help because we have been loved, we have been redeemed, we have been claimed by the power of God in Jesus Christ. We are the ones who can put them in touch with that life-giving source. We can raise their hopes. We, as United Methodists, in connection with one another, can offer that, that true life-giving connection of the love of Jesus Christ as we offer tangible means of hope and then offering the spiritual healing, healing that they need for their hearts. And this week we've seen some of that take place. We've seen it as we've witnessed so many teams who have been gathering across Wilkes-Barre and Scranton districts who, who have begun to respond to the need by offering their time, their labor, their efforts. We've seen hopes raised as, as United Methodists in our great connection all over the country have sent flood buckets, hundreds of them, and they've been flying off the shelves in the storage places in our churches. Others who have been donating cleaning supplies of food, water, tetanus shots, clothing. So many works of generosity, acts of kindness. For some, 
Perhaps this flood has been an opportunity for God to take off the roof of our awareness so that we can see the needs of those around us and to help reconnect with them. But let's not put that roof back on. We don't just need to to respond when when there are creeks and rivers that are rising. I challenge you in your own communities to be creative in finding ways to reach out to any in your community, any who are in need, whether it's creating a food pantry or or putting together back-to-school backpacks or offering a study in a, a local coffee shop or teaching English as a second language or some other new creative ministry that so many have begun as we reach out and connect with those in our community. Friends, we in the United Methodist Church are called to be the ones who will venture into the rising waters and bring people to the healing presence of Jesus as we make disciples for Jesus Christ, for the transformation of the world. In the face of rising waters, we have the hope of God who has claimed us and who promises always to be with us. And as a people of hope, we can connect others to that source of hope in Jesus Christ. So friends, raise hope in any way that you can. In the face of rising waters, raise hope. Raise hope.